Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And today's car is this, our long-term BMW X5 45e, this plug-in hybrid that arrived in the garage six months ago in August. And it has done six months motoring with us. Three drivers, myself, my wife, and my son have done in total 9,574 miles in the last six months, which with lockdown and things is a surprising number, but I'll go into reasons why in a moment. And we have achieved an average MPG over that period of 50.2 MPG. Quite, quite remarkable. And we've done that because of those nine and a half thousand miles, 4,952 miles were on pure electric only. 52% of our motoring with this car was purely on electric, not touching that six cylinder engine in front. So, lot to go around with this thing, a lot of things we've learnt, and especially with having run a, a pure electric car and then stepping into this, the sort of which ones I would go for now and all that sort of thing. That's what this video is going to be about. First, right. just a few things. Looks seem to be a bit marmite on this car. I don't, I'm not challenged by them, shall we say. I am very happy to have this sitting outside the house, but some people get a bit upset at just how big cars have got. I think it's because this is very popular in America and it looks fairly normal or slightly smaller in America. Over here in the UK, it looks that much bigger, but it's well thought out. And yeah, I, I really quite like it now. Um, the other thing, M badge, and you think, oh God, 21 inch wheels, M badge, ride's gonna be a disaster. No, ride is actually remarkably good. Refinement, you'll hear me say that word quite often with this car. Um, these are run flat tires and they're expensive. We got a nail in one tire, 298 pounds it was to change a tire on this, uh, which was quite a lot. This bugs me. This is a sill extension and it's a styling gimmick because um, I think it's become from a sort of saloon car background. Now, it loves locking this car, as you can tell. I've got a key in my pocket, which I'll get to in a moment. But it does, that sill extension drove us nuts because you get mud on your trousers every time you get in and out when it's dirty. I've mentioned the keys. I ought to just show you the two keys. You get two keys with your X5. You get this monster key, which has a readout in there, which I can't get to work. We've charged it up and it's basically died reason it's died is because we don't like using this key it drives you nuts it's got no key ring you can't put another key on so we asked bmw if they could supply a normal key and this is the normal key which is so much better and it's got normal buttons on it etc but this you can get an app on your phone to do everything this um, key can do and it's just clumsy and just a sort of bad idea it ought to be quietly dropped i think and just go back to the conventional key around the back i've always looked at this car i thought that's odd it's got this bolt i've now um my wife's fessed up that the tailgate went up one time and hit the roof on our carport and that's why that is no longer on there i didn't realize that in the back slightly shallower boot because it's got the battery and things but it does got it has got that tow bar we've done a little bit of towing with it not much um, but it's all a bit plus the carpet so we went 10 pounds on ebay and got a carpet protector, boot protector, which works really well. I also just want to show you the engine as well. Now, I have to confess, I haven't actually looked at the engine almost since it arrived, but just one thing I wanted to sh show you is just how low down this six cylinder engine is set in the engine bay, shrunken right down there. You can see these are the um, direct voltage uh, going to the electric motor that's sort of in line with the gearbox and things coming from the back. The battery is sort of flush underneath but it's a um, yeah we haven't got near it hasn't used any water hasn't used any oil that low setting of that engine comes about when we get to the handling of this car i think that has quite a lot to do with it one final thing it's got those trick uh, adaptive lights that when you have it on main beam you see the little segments the leds go out as a car approaches you and you get a main beam still on your dash slightly alarming no one actually flashed us and they're very bright and they seem to work i had that bentley bentayga in the other day and that one people were flashing us and it just seemed to be wrong but these actually work pretty well these laser lights bmw laser lights as they term it anyway i'm gonna take it outside now take you a few things around the cabin
Uh, so every time I get into this car, I'm greeted with, welcome, Charlie Metcalf. That's my son, and he got to it first, and he set the profile up as being him. Um, to energise everything, you just press stop start. Just some of the things we've picked up on here, what, good things. Buttons to control your ventilation, etc. All here, piece of cake, very little sort of going into a menu for the things you do every day. My heated seats, straight on, three bar, two bar, one bar, easy. One of my complaints last time um, I reported on this car was it has lane departure warning, doesn't it? These cars all have to have now, and it's pretty aggressive, and we set it down. And then, very kindly, someone commented, all you have to do is press and hold there, and you press it for a while, and it goes all off. Dead easy. It's something I find living in the country, muddy roads, puddles, it, they get very upset uh, lane departure warning systems work fine on the um, freeways of America, not so fine in uh, the Cotswolds. Uh, I drive just ace, I uh, find it really easy to um, work, navigation. The only thing I find I didn't realise to begin with is the top half of this, um, actually you can draw on it and I can do a C or a, C. yeah there you go, an H. H. I don't know where we're going but um, that sort of thing. But if when I was first trying to do it, I was using the circular thing to choose a letter. And every now, every now and then, like then, I would touch the top and it would shove an apostrophe or a full stop in. Shoulder. Like that. And I didn't realise it was doing it. Just be aware. The great thing is delete. you do that. You can do delete. delete. So once you've got used to iDrive, you just think it just beats every other system and you didn't realize how good it was until you go and visit some other cars but it is absolutely ace the display is different you have sort of power on the outside rather than the rev counter i've got sort of power up to 100 percent and then miles an hour on that side battery capacity there fuel tank there Another little grumble is the range given by your total range, including electric and petrol, miles out. It gets, you know, it will predict you'll have 600 and something miles um, you can do when that's not the case. Because it's got the electric assistance, the average MPG is in the stratosphere journey data. So I've set this at the start of each month. And this month so far, we've done 495 miles only because it's locked down in February. But 278 of those miles were on electric, um, and we have averaged 63.7 mpg. Wireless charging for your phone down there. I'm not quite sure about this trim. This almost always open because you pop your phone in there and put it on charge and you have your key in there. I don't quite like this as woods as other trims as black etc you can choose. Nice wheel, a bit fat small very electrically assisted this car no real feeling steering feel coming through the steering the other thing i wanted to show you um auto h adaptive electric hybrid and sport are all buttons controlled down here bit cheap really they just don't feel they're not individual buttons they're uh, they you sort of swap between and i've gone to electric now but they, they're not definitive you don't feel a press there or a haptic sort of trigger and the other weirdness here, I've got ride height adjustment here, but off-road that wasn't as good as I would hope. Anyway, I'm going to get a bit of a move on. This is ACE. Parking sensors, cameras. What's particularly noticeable, having come from the Jaguar I-Pace, is how instantaneous it comes up. So I, I can, if I could give 11 out of 10 for an infotainment system, then this would be the car to get it. It's so nice to live with. This car's got heads up display and just a nice touch. If you want to swap radio stations or anything, on here I have a scroller. You will not be able to see it, but I can choose my radio station or whatever I'm listening to or tracks just on this roller on the heads up. Other thing, refinement. This is my noisy bit of road, but it will not be noisy in this, in this car. I've just done a decibel reading actually and at 60 miles an hour it's 67 68 so you're right down with bentley bentayga levels of refinement in this car this is just how we've been using this car and to get the sort of figures i am staggered it all comes down to that battery size 
uh, on this car. It is that much bigger than all other plug-in hybrids. 24 kilowatt battery on this to give a supposed range of 50-ish miles. Now, in our experience, that has ranged from 46 in peak in the summer, and when it all got frosty and cold and miserable and minus five, it dropped to 33. And it's been in the sort of high 30s, mid to high 30s, I suppose, for most of the winter. It just shows you how much less range you get in cold weather with an electric car. And it's obviously no different in the plug-in hybrid. It's still a decent range and we've averaged 63.7 mpg over the last month. Another thing I've learnt with this car on electric, you obviously you would come religious just plugging it in. As soon as you get home, plug it in. The charge rate on this car is the slowest charging car I have experienced in all the plug-in hybrids and electric cars I have tested. The peak uh, speed of any car I've experienced is the Tesla 3 We're on that supercharger and it did 553 miles of electric range added per hour, so 553 miles an hour. This car, six miles per hour or something like that, I mean right down, um, the slowest by far. It's pointless going to an outside charge point in this car, away from home, because after two hours yeah, you've added 12 miles or something, it's, it's proper slow. They say they've done it to protect the um, German domestic electric supply because they don't have the capacity to all homes to have a fast charger. But I had that, um, the P400E, the Range Rover, that's, yes it's a smaller battery, but that's fully charged in uh, two and a half hours or thereabouts, which is a much faster charge rate per hour. It's about well, 12, 14 miles an hour. Well, this takes eight, nine hours to charge from a flat battery, which is a big surprise. In fact, I think it might be longer than that because it slows down after 80%. Other things I've learnt, if you drive on electric like this, the petrol motor up the front is stone cold. I thought it might put a bit of heat around it because you never know when you might need it and it might just have some system of having some warm water go to it so it's ready to be called into action. I'm actually, I'm on pure electric at the moment, but I'm gonna put it onto adaptive where it will do whatever it feels is correct. That internal combustion engine has just cut in. That will be the first time it has run. It will be stone cold from the start with no pre-warming. I'm, I'm sort of surprised, but I'm sure BMW have tested it. I mean, it's 11 degrees outside, but I just, just the mechanical sympathy I have built in thinks, is that a good idea when it's minus 10 outside and I go for an overtake and this stone cold engine is forced to supply power to do the overtake? Don't know. Uh, no faults, no nothing. On the flip side, the engine is only working for half of the time so your you know your engine should last forever because it's very rarely been called on unless you're doing the longer journeys another learning the weirdness of this engine it's it's almost it produces too much power i've almost got too much performance in this car it's just over five seconds to 60 146 miles an hour I see it's a family SUV. Do I actually want that sort of performance? And the reason I ask is because the MPG obviously plummets when it's using its internal combustion engine. It's a three litre turbo engine, quite highly tuned, 286 horsepower from its three litres. I mean, it's all very good, but I'm sitting looking at 18, 19 MPG. When you think if it had a more efficient, slightly smaller engine, it might do even more impressive figures. BMW will retaliate and say, hang on Metcalf, you've averaged 50 mpg over the last nine and a half thousand miles. That's not bad. And I have to say, yeah, fair cop. I'd also say that I did a trip down to Brands Hatch. You might have seen the little Fulvia is under rebuild. I went there and back on 
one charge, so it was a round trip of about 280 miles, and the average over the whole distance was 37 mpg. So 4550 would have been on electric, the rest using the engine at a cruise on the motorway, 71, 72 miles an hour. 37 points of an mpg average is not a bad effort really so maybe i'm making the song and dance about nothing but you just imagine it would be that much better and a lot of people said to me why don't you try the mercedes out which has the diesel engine and i haven't and I, i've got no real excuses the only one i could give is i just love the refinement of this petrol engine the combination and it's not all about mpg it's quite often just about the experience and behind the wheel of this it just feels a step above the class it's actually in and i sort of think that the 68 well this was 68,000 when it was new they've gone up a little bit they're nearer 70,000 before extras but its refinement and its feel on the road is very similar to the class above. It's very, very similar to full-size Range Rover, Bentayga, etc. Right, I'm now just going to select Sport. And if I select Sport, then the engine is always running. It's not suddenly that thing that's creeping around in electric only. This this feels rapid. And the other thing that was a surprise this car, the, the way it doesn't roll in corners. Just going through, this is the compression here. It's a bit stiffer damped in sport, slightly lower as well. And uh, it feels much better than you expect a two and a half ton vehicle to behave on roads like this. But the shock is the lack of roll. And I was convinced it had an anti-roll system on it, so I peered underneath and no, it's just because that battery is set super low, and like I showed you on the engine, that's also super low. And the result is it just doesn't roll on corners nearly as much as you expect, well almost at all. It's just the clever positioning of the heavyweight items being so low down, it feels way more dynamic than it has any right to. Conclusions on this car, well, dislikes for this car, I've sort of gone through them. The slow charge rate does limit what it can do. That stupid key, <laughs> just completely pointless thing, just use the conventional key, don't bother. If, I'm not sure if it's an extra, I should know, but I don't know. And then my other dislike is just the gap between the high performance engine and then on pure electric. It comes as a bit of a shock how quickly it will start drinking fuel once you're out of pure electric mode. The likes, just the usability, everybody in the whole family has loved this car. And ah, oh, a relief after running a pure electric car to get into this and do the majority of your miles on electric but also to use it for the long trips. And I think we would have beaten that 50.3 MPG average had we not been in lockdown and had we actually tended to use this for long journeys. So I think we've compromised its MPG because of that. If you're doing less long journeys, so this, this car does a regular 120 mile trip on a Friday and on a Monday. If you're not doing that, I think we'd be in the 60s or possibly 70s. Quite a lot of you have asked how much electricity does it consume? How much does the electric actually cost? So I worked that out as well. And when I looked, it was 4,958 miles, I think, on pure electric. We've done 33.8 kilowatts per 100 kilometers. Units are all over the place here, so I apologize for that. That works out for that amount of miles, we've used 2,700 units of electricity, kilowatt hours. At 14p, 
that costs 370 pounds I think it is something around there um, I'll flash it up on screen so when I'm on pure electric the equivalent to a normally combustion engine car 74 mpg from a two and a half ton great big SUV that can do five seconds and 146 miles an hour I think it's absolutely amazing that we are at a 50 mpg average on this car this size of vehicle that is way better than diesel I would have got from this and it just feels a really good stepping stone before going fully electric plug-in hybrid used properly I think would suit an awful lot of people so the, the whole thing of this was was I going to buy one and I have to say I've hesitated actually buying one I recommend it thoroughly absolutely ace and I've recommended friends, I've had quite a lot of correspondence with people on YouTube Receptor and people who have bought these and have been also very pleased with them and I have been very pleased, there is no other um, plug-in hybrid out there that I think does as good a job as this and is, is that battery size is just the one that really helps and the residuals on them are super strong on these cars, they're hardly losing any money because they're so flipping good. I haven't answered, have I bought one? I have not signed on the dotted line. The only bit I personally struggle with is does it make a good farmer's car? And I get annoyed at getting mud on the trousers, etc. as does the rest of the family. And, I, and it just, it doesn't feel comfortable off-road in that it, it will lower with no warning. So I can put it up on the height thing and I went through a gateway and I thought it had a high and it scraped its belly and there's battery bits down there and it's because it lowers itself about 18 miles an hour without warning and it's it just there's if i i am the point one percent who farms and sort of might take his car off road occasionally and it's it's a little urban this car if i didn't have that no question i think it, they've done a tremendous job and actually an insider at bmw but he says, I think that's the best BMW car we make at the moment. So there you go. That's our findings. It goes tomorrow. I'm going to be quite sad it's going tomorrow because it's been terrific to live with. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a bit more insight into the car. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing because there'll be more videos coming along very soon.